Okay, so let's have a look at some basics of encryption. So what we're going to have a look at in, in this part is public key, private key and hashing methods. And we'll see how they're used uh, together. We'll be building on these principles to look in a bit more detail of how we use these things in, in digital certificates. But for just now, here's Bob and there's Alice. And unfortunately, we have Eve in the middle. So Eve is our intruder. Uh, she is there to be able to try and breach the confidentiality. She's also there to try and spoof. Uh, so what we have with our cryptography is that uh, we have confidentiality, identity proving and integrity. And encryption works together uh, to produce all three of these these things. Okay, so first look, we'll look at the private key. So a private key, what we have is, a, is an encryption key. And Bob and Alice have the same encryption key, which hopefully Eve doesn't have. So Bob writes a message. He then encrypts with his private key. It becomes ciphertext. And then the ciphertext is received by Alice, and Alice uh, and decrypts it with her private key. The only way that really Eve can actually crack the message is to use brute force to try lots of different keys to be able to find out what Bob's key actually was. So let's take an example of a key. In this case, we have a key with four notches in it, and the notches can be a zero or a one. So how many keys do you think are actually possible? Well, actually, there are 16 different keys that could be made. And we define 4 bits gives us 16 keys. 20 bits gives us about a million keys. And common methods that we have for our private key encryption are 128-bit AES and 128-bit TwoFish. So 128-bit keys are quite common in terms of private key and it keeps the message secure so that Eve can't keep trying lots of different keys to actually find it. There are too many keys, 2 to the power of 128 in fact. We might also use 256-bit keys to make it even more secure. The next method that we have is public key. So with the public key, so we have Bob again, and let's draw Alice. Okay, so here's Alice. Bob has a public key and also has a private key. So the private key is the one he, that keeps secret. So again, we'll look at Alice, and Alice has a public key and a private key. And again, Alice keeps her private key secret. So let's say that Bob wants to send Alice some, a secret message. Well, Alice sends Bob her public key, as we'll find. She does that typically by sending a digital certificate. Bob then creates the cipher text, sends it to Alice. And then Alice will take the cipher text and then decrypt it with a private key. So the two keys work together magically. Alice's public key uh, encrypts and her private key decrypts. And the other way around, we can encrypt with the private key and decrypt with the public key. So the two are special keys. The public key is a bit like having a padlock that you would give to people who wanted to send you a secret message. You would ask them to add the padlock onto the box and then lock it for you. And then only the, the special key to open it would be the key which would open the box. So we can see there, Alice has used her private key to be able to decrypt it. And the great thing is we can create the keys at any time and it's easy to, to change them. The third method that we have is what's called a hashing method. With the hashing method, we take a, a message and we have what's called a one-way function. And the one-way function means that we can't really go in reverse so we create a special thumbprint, in this case it's called a hexadecimal signature. 
So for the word hello with a capital H and lowercase e, lowercase l, lowercase l and lowercase o, we produce this hex term. Common hashing methods are MD5. <coughs> MD5 is 128 bits long. Every time we create a hash with a set method, it's always the same length of hash. It's got 32 characters in it. SHA1 is another method, 160 bits, 40 hex characters. And SHA256, which is 256 bits or 64 hex characters. No matter what data that we have, we'll always produce the same length of hash signature for a, a, a certain hashing method. These days, MD5 and SHA1 aren't really used that much and have been seen to be fairly secure. We'd use SHA256, uh, SHA5112, and so on. The other methods that you are, the other coding, uh, encoding method that we'll see for a hash signature is what's called base64. So base64 you will identify often because it's got uh, upper and lowercase letters and also typically it has equal signs at the end. Okay, so there's the two different types. We have, we have our hexadecimal sequence. Hex is values 0 to 9 and then A to F. So you'll only see those values. Uh, and, and B64 has these equal signs. Okay, so we'll take an, another message. And this time we'll use hello. This time with a lowercase h. But we'll see that we actually get a, a completely different hash signature. And that's the thing about a hash, is that we just change one little bit of the data and it will create a completely different hash signature. So we'll see this in lots of different objects. I've got thumbprints for it. So for example, our digital certificate as a thumbprint a hash signature, which will identify that the that the uh, certificate hasn't been changed in any way. Okay, so let's quickly summarize what we've actually looked at. Okay, so there's Bob. And we have Bob. And here we have Alice. <coughs> okay, so the first method that we looked at is what's called the private key encryption or symmetric. Symmetric has one key. Sometimes we use what's called a key exchange method and that way we actually send the key through something like Diffie-Hellman because there needs to be some way for Bob to get the key to Alice. So Bob sends it through a key exchange method and Alice gets it on the other side. So typical private key methods are AES, DES, 3DES, Blowfish, Twofish, and so on. The second method that we looked at was a public key encryption. And the magic of public key encryption is that each side has two keys, a public key and a private key. The private key is kept secret and secure. As we'll see, the reason for it uh, later. But Bob, say, has a public and a private key and Alice has a public and a private key. And then if Bob wants to send uh, Alice a message, then she'll actually send what key? Yeah, she'll send the public key to Bob. Bob reads it, sends the message back encrypted, and then Alice uses her private key to be able to decode or decrypt the message. And then the last method uh, that we have is what's called the hashing method. And with the hashing method, we uh, get a hash signature. Okay, and that's really an introduction to, uh, to public key, private key, and hashing.